So we are on to the S3 cheat sheet, and this is a very long cheat sheet because S3 is so important to the um, AWS associate certification. So we need to know the service inside and out. So um, S3 stands for Simple Storage Service. It's an object-based storage um, and allows you to store unlimited amounts of data without worrying of the underlying storage infrastructure. S3 replicates data across at least three availability zones to ensure 99.99% availability and 11 nines of durability. Uh, objects contain your data, so you can think of objects like files. Objects, objects can be sized anywhere from zero bytes to five terabytes. I've highlighted zero bytes in red because most people don't realize they can be zero bytes in size. Buckets uh, contain objects, and buckets can also contain folders, which can in turn contain uh, objects. And you can also just think of buckets themselves as folders. Buckets names are unique across all AWS accounts, so you, uh, you can treat them like domain names. So uh, your bucket name has to be unique with the, uh, within the entire world. When you upload a file to S3 successfully, then you'll receive an HTTP 200 code. Uh, lifecycle management feature. So this allows you to move objects between different storage classes um, and uh, objects can be deleted automatically based on a schedule. So you'll create lifecycle uh, life rules or policies uh, to um, make that happen. Then you have versioning. So this allows you to have um, uh, version IDs on your objects. So when you uh, upload a new object, uh, the over top of an existing object, the old objects will still remain. You can access any uh, previous object based on their version ID. When you delete an object, the previous object will be restored. Once you turn on versioning, it cannot be turned off. It can only be suspended. Then we have MFA delete. So this allows you to uh, enforce all delete operations to require an MFA token in order to delete an object. So you must have versioning turned on to use this. Uh, you can only turn on MFA delete from the AWS CLI and it's really just the root account or the root user who's allowed to delete these objects. All new buckets are private by default. Logging can be turned on on a bucket so you can track all the um, uh, operations performed on objects. Then you have access control, which is configured uh, using either bucket policies or access control list. So we have bucket policies, which are JSON documents, which let you write complex control access. Then you have ACLs, and they are the leg legacy method that came before bucket, bucket policies. And they're not depreciated, uh, so there's no faux pas in using them, but they're just not used as often anymore. Uh, and it allows you to grant object access to objects and buckets with simple actions. And so now we're on to the security portion. So security in transit is something you have with S3 because all the files uploaded are done over SSL. Uh, and so you have SSC, which stands for server-side encryption, and S3 has three options for SSE. We have SSC AES. Uh, and so S3 handles uh, um, the key itself, and it uses AES256 algorithm uh, as the encryption method. Then you have SSC KMS, and as the name implies, it is using a key management service, which is an envelope encryption uh, service. And so AWS manages the key, and so do you. Then you have SSE C, and the C stands for customer. So it's a customer provided key. You actually upload the key. Uh, and you have full control of your key, but you also have to manage that key, all right? S3 doesn't come with client-side encryption. It's up to you to encrypt your files locally and then upload them to S3. You could store your uh, client-side key in KMS, so that is an option for you, but it's not that important uh, to actually have here on the cheat sheet. Um, you have also cross-region replication. This allows you to replicate files across regions for greater durability. You must have versioning turned on in the source and destination bucket in order to use cross-region replication. And you can replicate um, uh, a source bucket to a bucket in another AWS account. Then you have transfer acceleration. This provides fast and secure uploads from anywhere in the world. Data is uploaded via a distinct URL to an edge location, and data is then transported to your S3 bucket via the AWS Backbone Network, which is super fast. Then you have pre-signed URLs, and this is a URL generated via the AWS CLI or SDK. It provides temporary access to write or download to an uh, object, like data to that uh, actual uh, object via that endpoint. Pre-signed URLs are commonly used to access private objects. And the last thing is our storage classes. And we have six 
uh, different kinds of storage classes, starting with standard, and that's the default one. And it's fast. It has 99.99% availability, 11.9's durability. Uh, you access files within the milliseconds, and it replicates your data across at least three AZs. Then you have the intelligent tier, uh, tiering uh, storage class, and this uses ML to analyze your object's uh, usage and determine the appropriate storage to help you save money and just move to those other storage classes, which we're covering now. Uh, then you have standard and frequency access, uh, abbreviated to IA. It's it's just as fast as standard. It's cheaper um, to access files uh, if you're only accessing files less than once a month. So just one file in the month. If you access it twice, now it's the same cost as standard, and probably a little bit more because there's an additional retrieval fee when you uh, uh, try to grab those uh, files. It is 50% less than standard. The trade-off here is reduced availability. Then you have one zone IA, and as the name implies, it's not replicating across three AZs, just at least three AZs. It's only in one AZ, so it's going to be super fast. Um, and the trade-off here is it's going to be 20% cheaper than standard IA, but now you also have reduced durability. And again, it has a retrieval fee. Then you have Glacier. And Glacier is for long-term cold storage. It's archival storage. And it's very, very, very cheap. The trade-off here is that it's going to take between minutes to hours for you to actually access your files if you need them. Then you have Glacier Deep Archive. It is the cheapest, the cheapest solution uh, or storage class on our list. And you can't access your files for up to 12 hours. So uh, if you, uh, that's how long it's going to take before you can use them. So that is the S3 uh, cheat sheet. It was a very long cheat sheet, but there's a lot of great information here. So yeah, we're all done.